are set with a ticket to the championship game ready to be punched between one of these two teams. DJ Burns and Wilden Blavec jump it up, and it's Minutemen controlling the opening possession in their road units. Side, Matt Cross. possession to start a turnover for the Minutemen. And it'll be Murray State's ball bringing it up. They could score in bunches. They love to get out and run. True to their name, they are racers up and down the floor. And they do so in control. Coming into the tournament, just averaging nine turnovers a game. Take care of the ball really well because they have five smart, high IQ players on the court. There's Kenny White, aggressive to the 10. He had a big game yesterday against the Aggies. 18 points, six rebounds, four assists, and he did it on the defensive end as well. Two steals, two blocks. Yeah, the Tennessee Tech transfer, no more for his three-point shooting, but I thought he showed some versatility being able to put it on the deck, which should open up things for him on the perimeter as well. Here's Wood, gets it inside to D.J. Burns, 55 and White. There's Rob Perry for three, in and out. And there's an example of the good passing big men for Murray State. Yes, they're small, but it's like having five guards out there. Matt Cross, top of the key. He's a three-point shooter, but comes up short on that one. And Frank Martin is already in mid-season form. He is <laughs> apoplectic on the sidelines. Frank told us before this tournament started, I'm still getting to know this team. This team's still getting to know me. I can't coach the way that I normally do. I would beg to differ. Yeah, I'd say he's getting used to it. DJ Burns opens the scoring for the Murray State Racers. He's the only returning player from last year's roster for Steve Pro. He's going to be in there clogging the lane because Levesque can't shoot it for UMass, and so he's in there almost five on four. Brandon Martin, the coach's son, gets his first rebound and put back. And they're going to need some more help on the scoring, and it can't just all be Fernandes. Louise came off the bench to do a spectacular job, but it's going to be guys like Martin and Cross, 33. they got to get him going as well. Here's Burns. And we've got a foul on the floor. And, and that's the mismatch nightmare that Murray State brings to the table. With their four and five, you might have more size than they do, but they beat you with the quickness. And Wilden's Levesque, who looks so good off the bus, as they say. He's got size, he's got soft hands and quick feet, but he's saddled with two early fouls, so Frank Martin has to go to his reserves. Number 10, Isaac Conte, checking in. Here's Burns working on Conte. Good ball movement, lefty jumper, in and out again on the three ball. And Murray State was knocking those down in bunches, 10 of them yesterday in their win against Texas A&M. Here's TJ Weeks, 23 in Maroon. Inside the Conte, rejected by Kenny White Jr. Just terrific backside help there. Burns got caught on the high side. And just when Conte thought he was going to have an easy two, no sir, return to Cinder. Give me that. Here's Fernandes. Calls his own number short on the three. Good closeout by Murray State. Rob Perry, number two in white, came in as the leading scorer for these racers. What a step back game for Jamari Smith. He's a tough cover, I mean, and he's so good. He plays off two feet, can get in the paint, can hit you with the mid range, also capable from three. Brandon Martin. No, the rebound to White. I think you gotta turn that one down early in the shot clock if you're Martin. Murray State is baiting him into that shot. Deep three by Perry. Offensive rebound, Smith. You can see the emotion this racer team is playing with. 
That win yesterday wasn't just a win. It was an emotional win and a confidence booster for this new Murray State team. That's going to need some offense from the dude with the ball right now. 23, T.J. Weeks. And Weeks draws the foul on Murray State. When well, he talked about an emotional win, Steve Pro needed it in his return to Murray, Kentucky. His second stint as the Racers head man, coming off a year away from coaching, and before that had that miserable 0-18 season in conference play in the Big 12 that wrapped up his tenure six years in Ames, Iowa with the Iowa State Cyclones. You and I said it yesterday as we headed to the rental car on the way back to the hotel. We said, man, that's got to be the best, most meaningful win he's had in over two years. And it was. He's back home with his Murray State Racers and already has a signature win on the season, taking down the 24th ranked Aggies. On the other side, how good is that? UMass went over Colorado look, huh? I mean, Colorado in a week span has taken down Tennessee and then just dominated. There's the first turnover of the game for the Murray State Racers. As you said, in their first few games, three games into the season, they've taken good care of the basketball. They have, and, and they're a smart, high IQ team. And there's not many guys on this team that Steve Prome is worried about when they have the ball in their hands. We'll call it a sign of the transfer portal generation of college basketball, but Steve Prohm, in essence, forced to start four transfers in his first five. But they have gelled quickly. And a fight for the loose ball. It's going to be a jump ball, possession arrow to the Racers. Our first time out on the floor, and Murray State showing no hangover from that big upset win in round one. They lead it over UMass 6-4 and when we come back we'll punctuate the emotion that came out of this Murray State locker room after yesterday's win. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by visitmyrtlebeach.com. Find where you belong at the beach and by Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. Welcome back to the beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the best beachers in the world are hard at work and beach. This is Jacqueline Hildebrand putting on her own version of a Zoom call. Laughing her family again. She will not hear the end of that at the dinner table. Turn off the hot plate and pour the gravy. And that's how you beach with the best in Myrtle Beach. Until next time, stay beachy. Plan your best beach vacation at visitmyrtlebeach.com. Eating the rocket. Launchables! Built to be eaten! Uh. Eat fresh refresh. Just won't stop! Now, Subway's refreshing their catering with easy order platters and lunch boxes perfect for any party. Pool parties, tailgates, holiday parties, even retirement parties. Man, I love parties. Subway keeps refreshing and refreshing. Ever wonder why Kit Kats are so delightfully crispy? There's your answer. One, two, three. Tasty wafers covered in creamy milk chocolate. Isn't it nice wafers are having their moment? Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Number four, Kentucky. Number two, Gonzaga. Sunday at 7.30 on ESPN. Think that win yesterday in Myrtle Beach's first round meant a little something to this Murray State program? You bet it did. Steve Prohm returns to Murray, Kentucky, his second go around as the head coach with the Murray State Racers, and it was their first win against a top 10 team or a top 25 team in a decade. That brings them to today, and they are showing no signs of a hangover of any sort starting out with a 6-4 lead against UMass. Oh, what an awesome scene there. It means even more to Coach Prome, as we mentioned, 
with that tough last season at Iowa State, takes a year off, and then here he is early in the season getting that type of celebration. I've been a part of winning locker rooms, which can be the most joyous place in the world. I've been a part of losing locker rooms where it can just be flat-out depressing. He's seen both ends of it, so that one certainly hit an emotional chord for him yesterday. But they have not gotten complacent as you mentioned with this great start to the game so far and this is a program that is rich in tradition from the ohio valley conference where they spent 74 years won 28 regular season titles 18 tournament titles that means 18 trips to the ncaa tournament they've had nba players come through that program and a lot of terrific coaches as well and steve Crom's name is right up among all those terrific coaches like Billy Kennedy and Mick Cronin and the list goes on and on. Some subs on the floor now for Frank Martin. Rasul Diggins, a UConn transfer, number three in the room is on. Fernandez looking to get started like he did yesterday, but so far nothing doing. And you are not going to wrestle that ball away from DJ Burns, but Matt Cross is doing his best. Hey, hey. Those are two dudes right there that don't give up an inch. And you hear the Murray State faithful <laughs> applauding DJ Burns for that effort, but they see that every night from Burns. Yeah, absolutely. He, he's not going anywhere. They're going to give him a little bit of a rest now, but Burns, such a good post defender. Russell, please, please, <laughs> <laughs> we got a game to get to. Pat Adams says, did you not hear my whistle blow? Play has stopped. Listen, a Frank Martin coached UMass team, you know they're going to be tough. Same thing for Murray State, as we could tell from the early going. Five minutes gone by, low scoring so far. Well, and look at the post play. You see the three-quarter front by Murray State. That's where UMass wants the ball, right there. But tough defense by Murray State. Frank Martin's teams are inside out. Murray State trying to discourage that entrance pass. And that's one thing that Steve Prome was, let's say, concerned with coming into this tournament. How is his defense going to respond? He knew his team could score. Yep. He thinks he has five guys who could score double digits. But he wasn't sure about the defensive identity yet. Right, and so far they've shown, I think, Great resolve and resistance on that end of the court, evidenced by the post play we've been seeing early on in this one. So Steve Prome knows how to coach offense. If, there one, if there's one thing we know about Frank Martin, he knows how to coach defense. What's impressed you about UMass so far? Uh, they're always going to get in you and deny hard, and I think on Murray State side, you got to be willing to go late in the shot clock, make the defense work. Frank Martin, another staple, is playing zone on baseline out of bounds and that's where you see it now and a tough three but Quincy Anderson uses those hops to grab an offensive rebound for Murray State they try the lob and they get it Kenny White Jr. with his first bucket of the afternoon well yesterday's star the freshman RJ Louise 12 for UMass was on the wrong end of that highlight lost his man on the other end it's DeAndre Dominguez Beating his man down the floor and getting his first two. Yeah, you mentioned R.J. Luis, number 12 for UMass. My goodness, what a coming out party it was for him yesterday. Yeah, you got to have that shooter's mentality and a short memory. He saw the first one go in, which was huge, because the previous game against Towson, he was 0 for 10 and put that game behind him exploded offensively for the minute now. There he is guarding Kenny White. And good hands by Conte. Overextending on the defense a little bit, getting right up in the jerseys of the Murray State Racers. He could knock that down. Too strong that time. And gang rebounding from UMass. Something that Frank Martin's got to like as well. Inside, Conte. Nice little jump hook from Isaac Conte. The transfer from LIU gets his first two. And he very well may be 
their best low post score. I mean, Williams Levesque, a good option, too, with the way Conte came in yesterday and picking up where he left off. Oh, and met at the rim, Jamari Smith. But good stick to itiveness by 52 and White. Yeah, 52 Smith. I mean, that's not going to make him gun shy or quit at all on that play. They go inside out. Keon Thompson misses. And RJ Luis caught the ball, but he was on the baseline. That would be Murray State basketball. Well, here's good deep post position by Conte and a nice post feed as well. This is where UMass wants to get it, and Smith just didn't do his work early defensively, and they're going to make you pay. Again, this is an inside-out offense, so the more post touches UMass can get, generally the better their offense operates as a whole. Four starters and Quincy Anderson on the floor for Steve Prum's Racers. Conversely, five reserves on for UMass and Frank Martin. Listen, three games in four days. You're going to test your bench a little bit. Steve Brown looking for a little explanation as to why it's UMass basketball. The, the foul was called on number 10 in white, Quincy Anderson. And now Anderson whistled for another foul within seconds of each other. So immediately, Steve Prump forced to go back to his bench and number 14 Brian Moore checks in oh they get a cheap one on Jamari Smith trying to defend the post entry pass I mean the last place you want to get a cheap foul is on a sideline out of bounds play I'm just trying to do the math, and math was never my strong point. That's three fouls with no time coming yeah, out of right. the clock yeah. against Murray State. And now Jacoby Wood goes to the bench. If you're Steve Prohm, you say, all right, if that's how we're going to call it, make sure it's consistent both ways. But looks like they got Smith again. Well, this is a teachable moment for Steve Prohm in this relatively new group of Murray State racers. They've got to know how the officials are going to be calling this game. Well, and whether or not you agree with the call, you have to give credit to Conte. Being physical and demanding and cutting hard. I mean, the harder you work, the luckier and better whistle you're going to get. Two quick, important fouls against the Murray State team. That's really not very deep. Jamari Smith, a key player for them. Jump stop, Luis, no good. Walled up by D.J. Uh, Burns, and it is an offensive foul. Yeah, that displacement there by Louise. He was caught no man's land and lowered that shoulder a second time. D.J. Burns gets it back for his team. The see gets away with one, and then the second one's just boom. <laughs> Pretty intentional with that one. Try to pull his way against D.J. Burns. You're not going to have too much success trying that. Now some half-court pressure by the Minutemen. Solved by Murray State. Murray State is so good against that pressure of Texas A&M. Step through, White in the paint. He is smooth, isn't he? I mean, he just can get from point A to point B so quickly and gracefully while avoiding the charge. Russell Diggins takes it all the way to the 10, gets knocked out of bounds. Murray State again. Their ball movement's so good. They work together, fluid offensively, and opportunistic here. They're just going to swing it back. And there's Kenny White. Again, one dribble from the three point line all the way to the cylinder and up. Makes it look easy. They get it inside. Conte, no. A four point Murray lead with the ball. 12 minutes to go in the first half. Here's Justin Morgan, his first shot of this Invitational. Seeing his first time on the floor for Steve Pro. Diggins, off the dribble, no good. And White gets it and smartly throws it ahead to DJ Burns for an easy two. Good court vision 
for Kenny White. Versatility for Burns paid off. Typically he's down low. He switched out onto the three-point shooter and was able to get the leak out. Diggins for three. This time it's good. Well, Burns, you must have been looking at the scouting report and saying three can't shoot it. And Diggins said, you better think again. You're going to dare me. I'll make you pay. That's the first three of the afternoon for the UMass Minutemen who trail by three. Coming up on 11 minutes to go in the first half. That's a Murray State turnover. Chance to tie with a triple. Luis, no good. Another rebound for Kenny White. White already four points, three boards. This UMass team built differently than Texas A&M, but I don't expect the racers to have nearly the transition opportunities they did yesterday. Going to have to really be efficient in the half court. Not so much there. Thompson off the mark. And another rebound by Kenny White doing yeoman's work in the paint. Now Rob Perry. I'm sure Steve Prom would love to get him going a little bit. That's a big time score transfer from Stetson. But that's not Murray State basketball. I mean, they, they've been taking a lot of one on one shots. They are best when about 70% of their makes are off assisted field goals. Left handed three by DeAndre Dominguez, no good. Conte has had a few looks at close range and has not been able to convert. Timeout on the floor, 9.50 to go. A low-scoring affair so far between the Murray State Racers and the UMass Minutemen with a trip to the championship game at State. When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis persists, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once-daily pill. When UC got unpredictable, I got rapid symptom relief with Rinvoke. Check. When UC held me back, I got lasting steroid-free remission with Rinvoke. Check. And when UC got the upper hand, Rinvoke, Rinvoke helped visibly repair the colon, colon lining. lining. Check. Check. Rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid-free remission, and a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how AbbVie could help you save. Don't freak out, but you can get 50% off all menu price Domino's pizzas when you order online right now. Right now? Right now. Right now? Right now? Right now. 50% off, honey! Right now! Now through the end of the week, get 50% off all menu price pizzas when you order online at Domino's. Where can you get holiday ready and host the entire family ready? Lowe's, actually. Black Friday is here. Get our best deals on everything for the season while you can. 11. A legacy of success in Murray, Kentucky. Small town, just about an hour and a half from Nashville, Tennessee. But boy, can they turn out some talent. Goes all the way back to Isaiah Cannon, a guard who made a lot of money with the 76ers, was drafted 34th overall. Then campaign came along. He's still playing with the Phoenix Suns in his eighth season. And, of course, there's John Morant, the most recent star to come from Murray State, averaging 29 points, six rebounds, and seven dimes a game this year. And the fraternity and brotherhood that Coach Prohm and all the Murray State fans know, there is such pride in this program. And nobody better to let the world know that Murray State won a game than John Morant himself. This was tweeted out just shortly after their big win yesterday. Put the horses on Twitter as the racers get the victory. Now my son, Brian, is a Murray State fan because <laughs> he's the biggest John Morant fan. He sees that. He's all in on these Murray State racers. Especially in the transfer world, John Morant could have gone anywhere he wanted to, and it's only gotten tougher to stay at times. But 
What a great example of you can accomplish everything you want to as a superstar at the college level and make it to the NBA, staying right where you are at Murray State. Absolutely. Campaign zoomed with the team earlier in the season. Those things count a lot, especially for a smaller school like Murray. These are guys that were diamonds in the rough, too, that were overlooked on the AU scene and more of the Robin to the Batman, and then all of a sudden they exploded once they got to Murray State. Young New Zealander, number two in maroon with the ball. That's Tafara Gapari. He nails a three on cue, and they have really high hopes for him. Well, that's a big shot. This is a UMass team that was just 5 of 22 before that last bucket. And Frank Martin's teams are always going to be tough defensively, but they can't let their offense put so much pressure on their defense. Got to make some shots because the defense will reward them on the other end. Here it is, just... Nice skip pass, catch and stick over the outstretched arms of White. That's a tough shot. And then they're yeah. always well positioned on the other end. And then that's Smith. That's number three, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? A little bit of trouble right Boy. now for Murray State. Murray Smith going to the bench. And, and usually so good at not getting charge calls and being under control. And that guy right there across, so they need that from him. He, yeah. he is a bully down low. Likes to back his way into the paint. First lead of the game for the UMass Minutemen comes at the eight and a half minute mark of the first half. So Murray delivered the first punch and now a counter punch by UMass. And there's a sweet stroke to number 11, Justin Morgan, a freshman out of Memphis, scored 2,900 points in his prep career. Yeah, as a homeschool kid, too. Yeah. Talk about shot preparation. That's it. Well, he just showed you. So Murray gets the lead right back on that Morgan three. And then they thought they had the bucket. But Chuck Jones says, uh-uh, offensive foul on Brian Moore Jr. They had a really good penetration there. Eludes the first couple defenders. And as he thinks he has a clean path, slides over right away. Boy, seems like Weeks might have slid over just as he was taken off. Would have gone for an and one there. And, you know, we've talked a lot about how Murray State is the perennial underdog, being a mid-major school, Murray, Kentucky. You could say the same thing about UMass right yep. now. They're in the A-10, but Frank Martin at the start of this season said, we have high major kids all across the board, but we are brought together because of failure. He was fired as the head coach at South Carolina. A lot of these players have been cast offs and cast aside and transferred. And Frank Martin wants to tap into that type of feeling. And now a technical foul has been called on the floor, and it's on Murray State. Yeah, they have been frustrated with the whistle, and if you're Coach Prom, you got to say, control what we can control. Right now, a little bit frustrated are the racers. All right, we go to a timeout. UMass will shoot a technical free throw when we come back, trying to get back in the lead here in Murray State. Welcome back to the beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the best beaches in the world are beaching their best beach. Now let's check in with master fisherman Blue Gil Gomez. He is truly one with the fish. It's like he's swimming, but on land. That looks like a fish out of water. And that's how you beach with the best in Myrtle Beach. Until next time, beach easy. Plan your best beach vacation at visitmyrtlebeach.com. Do you like fish, Cindy? I do. Do you? I also like fish. The new Subway Series menu, the greatest sandwich roster ever assembled. Tone of the new outlaws got double pepper jack and juicy steak. Well, let's get some more analysis on that, Chuck. Mmm, pepper jack. Tender steak. Very insightful, guys. The new Subway Series. What's your pick? <laughs> Together or separate? Uh... If you get this wrong, there'll be no second date. No second date, you end up alone. Just like the psychic said. We're together. Cool. Hi, William Devane here. It's the Medicare annual enrollment period, and this year it's simple. One, before the deadline, call the number at the bottom of your screen. Two, check your zip code for a Medicare Advantage plan with $0 premiums, prescriptions, dental care, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every month. Three, 
you'll find out what you're eligible for. The annual enrollment period has a deadline, so don't delay. Call now. I called to find a plan that covers more of my dental expenses. I call every year to make sure my doctor is still in my plan. I call to see if my zip code has a plan with the benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I call every year. Call to find out the changes to your plan and see if you're eligible for anything new. The annual enrollment period has a deadline, so don't delay. Call now. Call 1-800-953-7748. That's 1-800-953-7748 now. Well, Dane Bradshaw, most coaches will tell you you learn the most about your team when they face adversity. And now for maybe the first time in this Myrtle Beach Invitational, Murray State is faced with a little bit of adversity. Yeah, they led wire to wire yesterday, and so now a UMass team that's showing a lot of grit, toughness, getting under their skin a little bit. Yeah, there have been some 50-50 calls that hadn't gone their way. Got to keep their composure through the racers. So Noah Fernandes is going to step to the line and shoot the technical free throw. He is scoreless so far in this game. Interesting to note. 7.42 to go in the first. The top two scorers in round one of this invitational, Jacoby Wood for Murray State, Noah Fernandes for UMass, both have yet to get in the scoring column. And Fernandes, he could score. But shooting free throws has been a bit of an issue. 56% coming into this game, and he misses the first. He's got the second, however. First point for Noah Fernandes. And now Murray State will regroup as Rob Perry is still pleading his case to Pat Adams. Well, of course, Fernandes got fouled before the technical on the jump shot, so he's going to remain at the free throw line. Fernandes one for three. And they'll have one more coming. Two for four from the line for Noah Fernandes gives UMass a one point lead over Steve Prome and the Murray State Racers in this first semifinal game from the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Dane Bradshaw, Rich Hollenberg. We're glad you're on hand here on ESPN2. And that foul's going to go on number 23 in the lead, TJ Weeks. So you've got to be able to penetrate against this UMass defense. Any Frank Martin defense you go up, uh, up against, if you think you're just going to swing it around the perimeter and run your stuff, think again. you got to have guys that can put it on the deck, under control, make plays off penetration. left alone got it partially blocked it's going to stay murray state basketball here's wood scoreless no more jacoby woods first two of the game that's a tougher shot than it looks i mean you got the defender on your hip you're having to shoot over the help defender kiss it off the glass well done tj weeks rattles home the three Feed more to Burns and DJ Burns will go to the line. And again, that's what you have to do be able to get into the paint, avoid the charge, find the open man. Here's the penetration. Good job drawing a defender. And it's usually that interior pass is going to be covered up. A lot of times when you go in there, this is another team that likes to really sink on that penetration. So be able to reverse pivot, find the open shooters as well. Well, we talk about all the upsets happening here in Myrtle Beach. There will be no upsets on Sunday, no matter who wins or loses between Kentucky and Gonzaga. Number four Wildcats 
number two Bulldogs going toe to toe in Spokane. Coverage begins at 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. I'm pumped for that one. Yeah. Oscar Shibwe, Drew Timmy, as you mentioned, plenty of talent and supporting roles around them, but. Gonzaga's searching a little bit though. They've got some new pieces in backcourt that have to step up and prove that they can take over the range from last year's team. Yeah, one by just one against Michigan State, albeit on an aircraft carrier. And then they took the L in a big way, took it on the chin in Austin to a good Texas Longhorns team. Head coach Chris Beard getting a little revenge from last year's blowout loss to the Zags. Here's a look at some of the other AP top five teams during feast week and where they're going to be. A lot of teams going out to the great Northwest to celebrate Nike founder Phil Knight's birthday. North Carolina, Gonzaga among them. Houston's going to be out there too. They're facing Oregon. We talked about the Kentucky-Gonzaga matchup. And then don't sleep on number five, Baylor. They have reloaded Keontae George and a top freshman in the nation for the Bears. Don't you know all those coaches hate having that high number next to their names to start the season. Nowhere to go but down. Target on their back. Right. High arc in three. Too strong and weak. Grabs the rebound. They leave it for weeks. On the other end, second three-pointer of the day for TJ Weeks Jr. Burns off the window. Nice drive for the big man. Really good read by 55 there. He realized he had the driving lane. Typically, he's driving to pass. That time, he takes it all the way. Another three ball, this time by Luis. Misses everything. And Brian Moore gets it on the weak side. For the lead. Got it! Jacoby Wood, don't let him get going. What a pretty stroke by Wood. I mean, this guy is, was on fire yesterday. The transfer from Belmont out of Cleveland, Tennessee. He is a sharp shooter. Love to see Noah Fernandes get going a little bit. Fernandes, no field goals yet in this first half. Murray State's defense has cut the head off the snake. Conte, no. The follow, no good by Luis. And they're going to get a foul on Noah Fernandes. Back a couple plays ago, we mentioned DJ Burns. Just high IQ post player. He's going to see he's got the lane and says, well, why slow up? Takes it all the way to the rim, through the contact, and then you better find 24 in transition. He is a catch-and-stick guy and run him off the three-point line or it's game over. A few years ago, it would have been unthinkable for someone from Belmont to transfer to Murray State. <laughs> they were arch rivals in the yeah. OVC, and now they're going to be arch rivals in the Missouri Valley Conference. Yeah, well, what I like about it, and I think Coach Prome does too, is, is now these are at-large type teams because there's no question both those teams were NCAA tournament teams, but it, you know it was a one-bid league, and so they had to win that conference tournament, whereas now you'll get opportunities. You don't have to just be all in on winning that conference tournament. UIC also added to the Valley this year, and Loyola Chicago, who lost here yesterday in the Myrtle Beach Invitational, they're moving on from the Missouri Valley to the A-10. As if keeping up with the transfers wasn't hard enough. Right. Now we got <laughs> new teams and new conferences. Coming up on four minutes to go. A tightly contested first half in this first semifinal. Met at the rim, and that's Sam Murray with the block making an impact. Rob Perry floats it up and in. First two of the game for the top scorer from Murray State. What an addition he's been. Transfer from Stetson can score really at all three levels. Perry had 12 and six boards against AM yesterday. Here's Keon Thompson. Two feet in the paint, rises up, can't knock it down. But he gets it back. Three and a half to go. 
They're going to have to find some offense from the perimeter. They've been trying to pound it inside, but it's not been a very productive offense for them the past few possessions. Seven on the shot clock. Cross goes in. Dominguez finishes. A nice angle there. And just a little bit of a gamble by Wood. Got caught on the high side. Eight different Minutemen have gotten in the scoring column, but they find themselves down by three with under three to go. Our final TV timeout of the first half. Murray State. Looking to continue a mini Cinderella run. It's been back and forth. Perry gets the bucket for the racers, and then Dominguez gets an opportunity here for the easiest layup he'll have all game. We've got a tight one here at the Myrtle Beach Invitation. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. studying calls for something extra. So you serve up new DiGiorno fully stuffed crust pizza. Because pizza with an extra layer of cheese stuffed edge to edge throughout the entire crust always hits the spot. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Oh, what a good time we will have. You can make it happen. Yeah. Voltaren, the joy of movement. Sonic's two for five menu, you get two delicious things for only five bucks. Which is helpful if you struggle with decision making. The Sonic two for five dollar menu. Mm, Sonic. It's a statement Saturday playoff push. Four matchups with playoff implications on ABC and ESPN. Kevin Chris and Wojo coming up at the half. We are going to recap a terrific matchup in the semifinals in Charleston between Penn State and Virginia Tech. Plus, we'll look ahead to that Virginia Baylor matchup later on tonight. Kind of a feisty start to this one. Chris. It is. Only down three, UMass. They have 10 offensive rebounds and only six second chance points. They've had a hard time finishing at the rim. Second day in a row, Murray State's defense has been outstanding. How about this? 25 minutes away from one of these first-year coaches playing in the championship game. Pretty good stuff. couple name brands having at it. Rich, back to you. Thank you, Casey. I know Kevin Connors has a little bit of a soft spot for the Murray State Racers with Casey's mid-major watch always on alert. But uh, they are anything but an underdog when it comes to their brand recognition. As far as mid-majors go, there haven't been many programs more successful than Murray State. No, there haven't been, but that doesn't make it any easier when you're a new coach because, I mean, you, you've got a new team. And we've talked to so many coaches, including Coach Prome, who talked about less X's and O's in the offseason, more team-building things. And what I loved was some of the team-building things they did. But he said, look, we had a Murray State trivia night. I had to make sure all these guys knew the history of this program that I thought was really unique. And they have all have certainly bought in, and they've done a lot of unique things to help them bond quicker than a typical freshman recruiting class that's now upperclassmen gone are those days yeah another thing that steve prom told us he did and i guess this gives us a peek behind the curtain as to what tv shows he likes he said they organized an amazing race yeah. <laughs> around the murray state campus and that also brought the team together turned out to be a little bit of a clue game as well as there was a missing golf cart from what i understand but, uh, <laughs> Nine points for Jacoby Wood. 
had 23 yesterday in their upset win over Texas A&M. That was the first win against an AP Top 25 team in over a decade for these Murray State racers. When you talk about being an at-large team out of the Missouri Valley Conference, no matter when that, whether that was in November or March, that win's going to count with yep. the selection committee. Cross goes two for two from the free throw line. He has six. And the cut cuts the Murray State lead to 31-28. And some full court pressure with 2.49 to go. Is Frank Martin like using defensive pressure like this usually in his coaching career? Yes, a lot of it's just to shorten the shot clock though than it is to get a steal. And the next thing you know, look, they hadn't gotten inside the three-point line. There's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Wood again, left alone, but unscathed. Here come the Miniman. Fortunate there. Catch and release. Matt Cross, the marksman. And he can do that. He did not get many clean looks against Colorado, but that is a guy you must be aware of when he's on the court. Only two points yesterday, but he grabbed eight rebounds. He has nine points this afternoon already. Tied at 31, two minutes to go. Rob Perry unties it. You know, and he doesn't have a lot of lift on his shot. It is a set shot when he shoots it from deep, but it's just a flick of the wrist, and it's cash money. Here's Brandon Martin. He comes up empty from close range. I think he thought he had an ISO one-on-one -on -one of the post, and the freshman Sam Murray came out of nowhere to help contest. Wood went behind the back and got fouled, and then... You saw Sam Murray go up high for a possible rebound, and he hit the ground hard as well. Lid coming off the rim a little bit here for UMass. It's going to be Matt Cross. Just steps right into it. Splash. And then on the other end, Murray State with the answer quickly. Perry has terrific range. You see, he barely has any lift or jump on that shot. Fires away. Well, it was a quiet start to this first half for 24 and white Jacoby Wood, but now all of a sudden... He's in double digits with 10. Sunday, we have the women's basketball game of the day. Number one, South Carolina. Number two, Stanford from Maples Pavilion on the campus of Stanford University. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Don Staley, Tara Vanderveer, the best of the best in the women's hoops. Getting better number one versus number two on a Sunday afternoon. Big time matchups this time of year. We gotta get these football minds start paying attention to college basketball. So one now, thing that'll catch your attention. How about the Murray State coaching staff, the t-shirts? Yeah. I'm not sure I approve. I don't know if they're holding down the parking lot security or coaching the game. <laughs> Powder blues yesterday. <laughs> now it's the highlighter yellows today. Under 10 to shoot for the Minutemen. TJ Weeks, circus shot. No. There's a fight for the loose ball. Jacoby Woods got it. And it's going to be a jump ball possession arrow to UMass. It's a fight for every loose ball. It, and I mean, both these teams, you put a 50-50 ball out there, and that's exactly what it is. And Steve Prohm is about as mild-mannered as they come in terms of head coaches, especially by comparison to Frank Martin on the other sideline. But he is giving it to Chuck Jones right now. One of the foul called on UMass there, but didn't get it. After all that, the ball's thrown out of bounds. A UMass turnover, but just their fifth of this first half. And some of those self-inflicted wounds that drives Frank Martin crazy. Just pretty simple man-to-man -man coverage there on the baseline out of bounds. Got to catch the ball with two hands, though. A couple times in this game, we see guys just go after with one hand. Get two hands out there. And there's a takeaway by UMass. Dominguez in the open court gets fouled by Kenny White. And DeAndre Dominguez will go to the line for the first time today. 
And that's the third foul on Kenny White. So foul trouble will be a storyline for these Murray State racers going into the second half. Jamari Smith has three. Kenny White has three. And one of the top reserves, Quincy Anderson, also with three fouls. That's a good point. And they've got some freshmen on the bench. They certainly haven't been in this big of a game or this big of a moment, but they got to be ready to step up and get some minutes. Sam Murray, one of the freshmen, number 22, played sparingly in this season, got a couple minutes. May have to log a few more. So the officials are at the scores table. Trying to sort this one out. Not much to sort out. No. It's a foul, right? I don't know if they were looking to make sure that it was a shooting foul or not. Either way, it would be two free throws, both teams in the double bonus. Well, I think they wanted to just make sure he made an act on the ball, certainly did. So DeAndre Dominguez will step to the line. Three for four this season from the free throw line, but his first two attempts in this semifinal. And he hits the first. That brings UMass to within four. Tip off your weekend with our star-studded NBA Friday doubleheader, Joel Embiid and the Sixers, hosting Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks at 7.30 Eastern. Then Julius Randle and the Knicks squaring off against Steph and the Warriors. Coverage beginning with the NBA countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and on the app. How about Steve Kerr being pretty vulnerable and open, saying, hey, we understand this could be our last ride, last dance together. This year, maybe next year, well, you don't know. The it's been. Yeah. With 12 on the shot clock, tough shot by Brian Moore. And now... Let's call it six seconds differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Keon Thompson not paying attention to that. <laughs> Left-handed three, T.J. Weeks no good. DeAndre Dominguez takes it away. And now the shot clock is off. It's virtually identical with the game clock and a use it or lose it timeout called by Frank Martin. Both teams stepping into their huddles. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Come on back for the final 13 seconds of the first half. This holiday season, give your family the gift that keeps on going. Our very own Energizer Bunny. Energizer Ultimate Lithium. <laughs> the number one longest lasting double A battery. What do you mean the connecting rooms were not confirmed? Exactly, not confirmed. We need people to see our kids. Oh, you'll be able to see them. When you want your kids in a room that's actually connecting, it matters where you stay. Hilton for the stay. When you talk about coaches coaching hard and loving his players hard, that's the epitome of Frank Martin. It, it sure is. And they're understanding him really quickly right now, despite a bunch of new guys. He has been a program builder everywhere he's gone. He's left it better, and he found it. That magical Final Four run for South Carolina really put the SEC as a whole on the map. I mean, that's when everybody realized, hey, the SEC is more than just Kentucky, Florida. He's got to be happy now. 11 for 40 from the field and only down three with the ball. Five seconds to go in the half. Cross, deep three. Off the window, no good. There's a scramble for the loose ball. Stop me if you've heard that before. 1.7 to go. Well, the old Bryce Drew heroics for Valpo. That play was called Racer. See if there's anything similar here. I love it, Dean Bradshaw. <laughs> Wouldn't it be good if, if, even if it counted <laughs> by Jacoby Wood. And we go to half. Just a really well scouted, well coached game by both sides. And this is the guy we're talking about, 11 with the ball. He's going to have to create his own a little bit. Our first half stats brought to you by Dollar General. You saw Jacoby Wood, who you just referenced. 11 points coming off a 23 point outing in the quarterfinals against Texas A&M. Wildens Levesque spent a lot of time on the bench after starting the game. 
And then a couple of minute men hit the deck off that miss by Levesque. Well, no offense to Levesque, but Burns has backed off him, and that's a case where, as my coaches used to tell me, there's a reason you're open, right? Turn it down, dribble handoff, especially early in the shot clock. I know he's worked on that shot, but early, see if you can get a better one. Settle for that late. Here's Jacoby Wood, 24 in white, leading all scores. Jamari Smith in foul trouble. And Cross, perhaps his seventh rebound of the contest. Yeah, Smith was cold coming out of halftime after sitting for so long. Essentially had two dead ball fouls back to back. Got him to the bench. Weeks in transition. TJ Weeks Jr. has his third three of the game, and that ties the game at 36. Wood misses an easy one. And Brandon Martin, one of the better rebounding guards, helps. The Minutemen with another possession here to try and take the lead. Wildens Levesque over his shoulder. No, the follow no good either. Nice little shot fake and pull up by Rob Perry. He has set. That's a textbook shot fake. I mean, he got the ball right over his head, sold it extremely well. One drill pull up. Fernandes finds Cross. And that Cross will go to the line. Cross plays with some reckless abandon. You yeah. like that. And he cuts hard as well. And White's just got to make sure he doesn't bring that arm down. She picks up his third. But this time, Perry, such a threat from deep. And he's realized he's got to close out on the shooter, but got to do it under control. Cross misses the free throw. So foul trouble for Kenny White. He has three. Jamari Smith has three. Those are two of the big weapons for Steve Prohm in the Murray State Racers. Which is really tough in such a physical game, too. I mean, uh, it's not like they're going to be able to shy away or avoid contact in this matchup. All he needs is a little bit of airspace, and Jacoby Wood will make you pay. Yeah, just when you think he can go under the ball screen because he's so deep, not the case. Here's Fernandes, still looking for his first field goal. Another three, corner by Perry, no good. Mental reset from the elbow, Brandon Martin for two. I think that's a better look for Martin. I mean, turned around, squared up, didn't rush it. Good look. Here's Rob Perry again. <laughs> Shooter's mentality, huh, Dan? He just kind of plays the game like he's at an old man pickup league, doesn't he? I mean, he just. Takes a couple dribbles, doesn't have that lift on his shot, but it's butter. Bodies all the floor. Kenny White surrounded by Minutemen. And it's a jump ball. It'll be possession arrow Murray State. Good fight from 13 and White. <laughs> Both these coaches want opposite thing. Frank Martin yelling travel. Coach Prome saying we got the timeout. Just bodies flying to the ground. As soon as that ball hits the deck, guys are flying after. And now Kenny White a little slow to get up. Might have lost the contact lens. If he wears contact. Yep. I can't confirm that. But it looks like Kenny White will be okay to stay in the game despite the fact that he has three fouls. I usually think you prepped really well for games. How do you not know if he wears contact I, I, or not, Rich? I'm Jeez. beating myself up over it right now. <laughs> and that ball thrown away by Jacoby Wood and Aaron Pass. And an otherwise cleanly played game, just the sixth turnover for Murray State.
The winner of this game advances to the championship game, and they await the winner of a couple of upstart programs, Charlotte and Tulsa. And if you pick those two teams to be playing in the semifinals, you're a lot smarter than me. And a hand check foul on the floor. Oh, that's white. I mean, is that his fourth? That yeah. is his fourth. That's a tough break. I mean, he's a really good defender for them. He gets out in transition. He's a three-point shooter. And he's going to have to sit. Most likely for the next eight to ten minutes, I think. Here's Cross. Side dribble. Can't knock down the triple. And it'll be Murray State basketball. So a choppy start to the second half. Almost four minutes gone by. Again, I think that's fa that favors you, Mattis. Even though that's a missed shot, you just keep having these dead ball situations, the jump balls, the dead ball turnovers even. Keeps Murray State at bay. UMass played a close one in the quarterfinals, taken down Colorado by three, but they didn't have to face Jacoby Wood in that game. 17 for Wood. Yeah, who needs a half-court play call when you got 24? Calls his own. Fernandes with an answer. First field goal of the game he for talking. Noah Fernandes. Yeah, he starts talking to that Murray State bench, too. Perry. Boy, that was from 35. Martin. Shot fake. Pull up. Too strong. And that was across the end line, and it'll be Murray State basketball when we return. Frank Martin in his first year at Amherst, but he's got UMass ties. We'll tell you why his better half is the story behind that when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. Mavs, Celtics, and Clippers Warriors, Wednesday on ESPN. And we're back at the beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the best beaches in the world are beaching all over the beach. This is Daryl One Trip Lavoy, a true beach strongman. Oh, blinded by the floaties. Oh, oh Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you beach with the best in Myrtle Beach. Until next time, beach easy. Are you saying beach easy or beach easy? Beach easy. Plan your best beach vacation at visitmyrtlebeach.com. He'll never make it back. The newest thing for Pizza Hut isn't pizza at all. It's cheesy, so crispy, loaded with toppings, and just $6.99. Enough for two, price for one. New Pizza Hut melts, just $6.99. I'll be like, Extra hard studying calls for something extra. So you serve up new DiGiorno fully stuffed crust pizza. Because pizza with an extra layer of cheese stuffed edge to edge throughout the entire crust always hits the spot. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Buying a home? Rocket Mortgage will cover 1% of your rate for the first year at no cost to you. Saving you hundreds, even thousands with Inflation Buster. That's more mini vacations, a lot more lattes, more date nights, Plus, if rates drop within three years of your home purchase, you get exclusive savings when you refinance with Rate Drop Advantage. That's more cash in your pocket. Save when you buy today and refinance tomorrow. Visit inflationbuster.com to get started. Hey, ref, that's a football tackle. We're playing soccer here. He's right. It's soccer. My Doritos football. Is it called football or soccer? Have you won two World Cups? Does it look like I've won two World Cups? No matter what you call it, don't forget the chips. It's the Subway Series menu. Twelve irresistible subs. The most epic sandwich roster ever created. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. You know, Dane, I don't think Coach Martin would mind us calling Anya Martin his better half. Uh, Anya Martin, not only Frank Martin's wife, but also a standout 
track and field athlete at UMass back in the late 90s. She set all sorts of A-10 records, and Frank and Anya have kept close ties to the UMass athletic program because of that. So after he got let go from South Carolina, he said it took about a week or so for him to decide, yeah, I still can coach and I still want to coach. And then the UMass job opened up, and it was serendipity. Well, for all this time, she's been known as Frank Martin's wife, and now he's known as Anya Martin's husband, right? I was at a Halloween party recently where you kind of had to dress like your husband and she dressed like your wife. I, I want to see the, the swap there. That would be a good one. track and field. Yeah, Anya would be the on the losing end of that one. <laughs> Five minutes gone by in the semifinal round of the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Murray State hanging on to a four-point lead against the UMass Minutemen. There's Jamari Smith's first shot of the second half. No good. See if Noah Fernandes continues the hot hand after getting his first field goal. Levesque, left-handed jump hook. And he's got that. He can go over either shoulder there. It's all about deep post position for him. And one of the few times UMass has been able to get that one to five pass. Out of the game. Burns with the shot fake, head and shoulders. And he'll go to the line and shoot too. Just good man, instincts oh man. and timing there from Burns. Yeah. Is Wilton's Levesque a tantalizing prospect or what? Oh, he, he really is. I mean, coming out of high school, this was the number two ranked player in the state of Massachusetts. And you see a little bit of why. A little shimmy shake. And score with either hand down there in the post. DJ can't knock down the first of two free throws. Steve Prum calls DJ Burns the heart and soul of this Murray State program. He's certainly one of the best offensive rebounders, not only in the Missouri Valley Conference, but in the entire nation. Last year, 25th in the country in offensive rebounds per game. That's a great stat. I mean, his instincts and awareness and effort is, is what allows him to be that. It has nothing to do with him being physically imposing or just incredibly athletic. Inside again. This time it's Conte doing work, and he converts off the window. So I think Frank Martin's pushing all his chips in on the table. They got to go inside to win this game. Here's Burns. Speaking of going inside, nice lead from Perry to DJ Burns. Yeah, you, you got to have great vision to see that bullet pass from Perry. Defense, 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 defense. So, our first game, we saw a C note, 100 yeah. points by Colorado. Today, I don't know, might be first to 50 wins this one. Conte, not this time. And a foul is called, and play is blown dead. It'll be Murray State basketball. Look at this dime here. I mean, just good vision against that zone. Finds the opening. Burns goes right up with it. You mentioned, though, with UMass, that point of emphasis of pounding it down low. Not only is that where they want to go, but it's where they need to go. With Murray State's foul trouble down low, you know, they might not be quite as physical, worried about picking up that fourth, fifth foul. Here's a lob! to Jamari Smith. And there is Perry again for the second time. Opposite side, cross-court pass. And for UMass, it might be two and done on that zone if I'm Frank Martin. And Smith blows up the lob on the other end. Leads to a leak-out dunk by Brian Moore Jr. And all the energy has shifted to the side of the blue and gold of Murray State. What an athletic play by Jamari Smith. I mean, how high he got up to stop that lob pass. Not just his lob dunk, lob steal. It's away first. It's going to be against the zone. That open spot on the baseline. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. And then the steal, kick ahead. And all of a sudden, the racers are off to the races. The new Subway Series menu, the greatest sandwich roster ever assembled. Tony, the new outlaws got double pepper jack and juicy steak. Well, let's get some more analysis on that, Chuck. Mmm, pepper jack. Tender steak. Very insightful, guys. The new Subway Series. What's your pick? Where can you get holiday ready and host the entire family ready? 
Lowe's actually. Black Friday is here. Get our best deals on everything for the season while you can. Because your lives are forever entwined. Darling, please be mine. Love Entwined. Exclusively at K. Quiet. This holiday season, give your family the gift that keeps on going. Her very own Energizer Bunny. Energizer Ultimate Lithium. <laughs> the number one longest lasting AA battery. Hey, did you hear? There are new COVID-19 booster shots designed for recent Omicron variants. Pfizer, the more you want to do, the more we want to do. Schedule yours at vaccines.gov. BMW Road Home Sales Event, on now. Receive a lease loyalty credit of up to $3,250 on select models now through November 30th. True story. This early season banger isn't just a battle of old Americans. These guys know how to play. It's between two of the best teams in the land. Experience. Number four, Kentucky. Number two, Gonzaga. Sunday at 7.30 on ESPN. Well, that's certainly going to be a highlight of Feast Week. A lot of UK fans all over the country, even here in Myrtle Beach. And Gonzaga's made themselves a national brand as well in the 20-plus years Mark Few has been there. It's going to be a great game Sunday night. Look forward to that one. But we've got a good one here in Myrtle Beach in the semifinals where the Murray State Racers have used a 6-0 run over the course of the last minute and 11 seconds to take a six-point lead. UMass had just tied it up, 46-46, appeared to have the momentum, but the defensive breakdowns in that zone where they lost the back line, allowing for an easy layup of Murray State, then the lob dunk, and then, of course, the transition dunk as well, and just like that, a 6-0 run for Murray State. And Rob Perry, who's known as a scorer, 1,200 points in his career at Stetson, has the last two dimes that were pretty. Weak side rebound, Mark. There's Fernandes. Martin from the wing. And another offensive board, Dominguez this time. Wide open, Diggins. Got it. They earned that one. And great effort by the bigs of UMass to keep that alive. I mean, those guys were boxing out as if it was a defensive rebound. Jamari Smith can't answer with a three. And who wants it for UMass? That one tipped away by Wood out of bounds with a state UMass basketball. And we have our under 12 media timeout. Frank Martin exhorting his troops. They're down three, 52-49, 11.58 to go. To severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzi. Things are getting clearer. I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's on me. Nothing in me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is every day. Achieve 
clearer skin with Sky Rizzi. Three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. In another study, most people had 90% clearer skin, even at four years. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Now's the time to ask your doctor about SkyRizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic. Learn how Abby could help you save. Subway's dropping 12 new subs for the all-new Subway series menu. The new monster has juicy steak and crispy bacon. But what about the new boss? It looks so good. It makes me hangry. Settle down there, big guy. The new Subway series. What's your pick? Dane, it's a little bit of a war of attrition for both of these clubs. Murray State because of foul trouble. Jamari Smith and Kenny White both in foul trouble. But on the other side of the things... As we take a look at our game track brought to you by Visit Myrtle Beach, Frank Martin's two top scorers yesterday, Noah Fernandes and R.J. Luis, have not lived up to yesterday's billing. And it's not always just about them not being ready to play. Look, the book is out on them. This is a good Murray State, well-coached team. And it gets tougher and tougher to score the more film that's available for you. And so those were two top priorities coming into this game for the racers. But give UMass credit. They've had other guys step up. Deep three. Diggins. No. Luis fighting for the rebound. And I think that was DJ Burns who went down hard. Or no, that's Jamari Smith. And he's grabbing the back of his head. He got up quickly. Let's hope he's going to be okay. Jamari Smith came into this tournament nursing a sore shoulder we were told he was going to be wearing a harness but he hasn't and now he goes down and it looked like his well frank head martin, hit the hard way. yeah frank martin felt like it was actually smith that fouled the wheeze initially there and of course smith get beat up at the end of it so that's something else to keep an eye on the three fouls and now the blow to the head for Jamari Smith, but he's still on the floor for Steve Prone. Eighteen on the shot clock, nearly picked off by Diggins. Here's Smith with the ball. Shot fake, scores! And that's what he does, such a good job of. He gets in the paint, jump stop, patient. He had that charge in the first half, which was uncharacteristic. That's more his game. Any questions as to whether he's okay? He just answered them. Here's Luis. It's been a struggle for him all afternoon. 18 yesterday. Zippo today. The life of a freshman. Perry. Got it back. Perry's percentages are down from deep in this game. One of eight, I believe. But a lot of that is due to shot selection. He's taking some tough ones. Three on the shot clock. Moore lost it. And it's going to be a shot clock violation. Good defensive possession by the UMass Minutemen. And look at Frank Martin. I think his message there is more about the offensive end of just not settling and taking tough shots. Work some offense. Frank Martin is in full Frank Martin form as he tries to coach his team into the championship game. I still would like to see them pound the ball inside. They had those back-to-back -back possessions where they got deep post position. They have not looked to pound it in since then, though. Bounce pass. Errant. Another UMass turnover. DJ Burns. Good ball movement. More. Can't pay it off. And despite all the there offensive struggles, UMass is down just five with ten minutes to go. Well, again, that's what they want. Uh, to reiterate, it's the Murray State foul trouble that gives you an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. You want the deep post position anyway, and you can draw fouls. 
Make these guys a little bit less physical for the racers. I'd keep going back to it as best I could. It's a UMass team that in the preseason was picked eighth in the 12-team A-10. But I don't think those preseason rankings take into account effort. And you know a Frank Martin team is going to give you 110% effort. Yeah, I just don't like Levesque picking and popping, again, given the success you've had recently getting it inside. They're going to count the bucket and give him a foul. And Brian Moore will go to the line attempting a three-point play. That can be the other issue. Not that Levesque's not capable of making it, but if you're a big man and you take a three, the guards are down on the interior. And so your transition defense is not as good when your teammates aren't expecting you to take that shot Plus, it's harder for the big man to get back the same way a guard would typically at the top of that offense. Now Jamari Smith comes in to spell D.J. Burns. I think UMass has done a pretty good job so far in this game of not allowing Murray State to get that pace they want in the transition, but not the last couple of possessions, giving up an open three despite it not going in and in that time. Weeks down low. Well, he had the spoon feed to yeah. Levesque, didn't he? And Smith just walled him up. Here's Quincy Anderson. He can jump out of the gym. Perry kicks it back out. Nice pass fake by Smith. He went up. Offensive foul. On Jamari Smith, that's number four on 52 and white. You just got to know that's coming. When you drive baseline, that help is coming early and often. And he's such a good passer. I mean, he's really got to take his time there. That's twice UMass has slid over and picked up two critical charges on 52. In a perfect world, Steve Prohm would love to play Jamari Smith and DJ Burns next yeah. to each other on the floor. Mm -hmm. Haven't been able to today because of foul trouble. That's a great point. Two really good passing bigs. They don't beat Texas A&M's pressure the way they did without those two. And now Kenny White Jr. on the bench going to ride the bike and try and stay loose. He's going to the locker room. Thompson off the mark. Offense at a premium for Frank Martin and company. Here's Jacoby Wood being hounded, still finding his way to the hole and getting fouled for his efforts. Now this kid is making a name for himself. I mean, they harassed him all up and down the court. He doesn't get the hand check foul and just sticks with it. Finds a way to weave through the basket here. I mean, you talk about knifing through the entire defense. And Levesque, I feel for him. I mean, he jumps straight up and down, but Wood absorbs the contact. He took plenty of fouls early in that possession to earn his way to the stripe. It's hard to believe Jacoby Wood only averaged 6.3 points a game last year with Belmont. It's a deep program. He has 18 today after 23 yesterday. Sunday, we have the men's basketball game of the day. The first ever meeting between Kentucky and Gonzaga, number four and number two. Last season's National Player of the Year, Oscar Shibwe, leading the Wildcats against Drew Timmy and the Bulldogs in Spokane. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Now, they're not playing that game in the kennel, so if they do a return game, I wonder where that game's going to be because it won't be at Rupp, I'm guessing. Well, I, I think the last year of the contract, they do go to the kennel. There was a lot of criticism on that. They're saying, hey, if, if you're really going to come play us, play us in the kennel. Right. I think it's in whatever it might be, year seven of the agreement. They blow the roof off that place. Weeks with the interception and a hard foul as T.J. Weeks goes down. UMass needs a bucket in a big way, Dane. No points for the Minutemen in the last four minutes.
Fernandes trying to create. Now Cross off the window can't get it to go. And Brian Moore comes away with it. Perry. And now Jacoby Wood will hit the reset button. 13 on the shot clock. Perry tries it himself and gets the shooter's roll. Largest lead of the game for the Racers with seven and a half to go. The Racers just have more scores and more options on the court for the offense. Then do the Minutemen. Somebody's got to come up with a basket, like you said. And it's a block there, but like we've been saying, UMass's offense puts way too much pressure on their defense, and you can only hold the Racers at bay for so long. If you see Perry here. Hey, when you're a shooter, you get these types of roll. The friendly bounce as the Racers build a double-digit lead. Seven minutes from a championship. Welcome back to the beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, home of the best beachers. Here we have Ryan Rubasa. He's got a pool handstand like an Olympian. Watch out for that cannonball. Oh, oh, beautiful. And that's how you beach with the best in Myrtle Beach. Until next time, stay beachy. Plan your best beach vacation at visitmyrtlebeach.com. How many handstands can you do? Three. I can do five. It's very impressive. It's a statement Saturday playoff push. Contenders must move it. Big stakes all across the country. This is why we love college football. Four matchups with playoff implications. Saturday on ABC and ESPN. Oh, what a good time we will have. You can make it happen again. Oh. Terry, the joy of movement. So is this stuff really fresh? Yes. I mean, yeah, we don't have freezers, we don't have microwaves. We always have fresh stuff coming in. I mean, this is the best guac that you can get. Fresh is what you stand for. Definitely. Wireless family plans save you money, but then you have to deal with family. So I got visible. Get unlimited data for as low as $30 a month. No family needed. Is the turkey done yet? It's a turkey! Visible. Switch this holiday and get up to $250. The chicken has always seemed to be a big favorite. People love it. You're not pulling it out of a box. You're making food. Yeah. I like being able to put pride in my food and pride in my work. You get to walk right in. You see me making your chicken. This is going to be in your bowl. This is it. This is it. This is it. <clears throat> Dane Bradshaw, file this under recipe for a double-digit lead in the second half. Murray State shooting 56% in this second 20 minutes of this semifinal compared to UMass, who's only 27% from the field. And they've been able to do it really in the half court. Yes, transition, they've been opportunistic, but thanks to guy, that guy, number 24, Jacoby Wood, been able to create his own offensively. Able to penetrate through the defense, get into the rim, pull up jumpers, three balls, you name it. So the slight clock adjustment moves the game from 7-19 to 7-16. So all that means for Murray State is they have three fewer seconds to run out before they make the championship game in the Myrtle Beach Invitation. Great fan base. They always travel wherever Murray State goes. Used to be throughout the Ohio Valley Conference. Now it'll be throughout the Missouri Valley Conference. So some some new locales for this Murray State fan base to check out. Fernandes is limping a little bit after getting tripped up on that play. They have just hounded and harassed Noah Fernandes this afternoon, forcing somebody else from UMass to step up, and no one's been able to today. I'm 
Nice hustle there by Cross. As soon as you think you've corralled the defensive rebound, you get can't get comfortable with it. Saves his team a possession. That's the seventh held ball of this game. <laughs> two hungry teams, two aggressive teams. Right now, though, it's Murray State getting the better of it. Cross, up and in. And that's all due to the extra effort on the offensive glass. Creating that loose ball, getting his team a baseline out of bounds underneath their own basket. Now you get a stop and another basket, and all of a sudden we've got ourselves a ball game. Back door, Wood blocked by Conte, but a foul's call. Well, when you have these denials and pressure from a Frank Martin defense, you have to have some pressure release plays. And that time, a nice read with the back door cut, attacking the glass. You'll see Wood jumps out to the perimeter and then realizes, hey, I got a back door opportunity, and attacks the rim. So Jacoby Wood at the line, leading all scorers currently with 18 points, coming off that 23-point effort that was a career high for him last night against Texas A&M. He has 19 now. And make it 20. Back-to-back 20-point -back efforts for number 24 in white for Murray State, Jacoby Wood. Fernandes gets it to go. That's the first time we've really seen him force the issue, but with time running out and the deficit, he's going to have to do more of it. Yeah, only seven points for Noah Fernandes. These are the two top scorers in the tournament face-to-face, -to -face, Wood and Fernandes. Ten on the shot clock. Something tells me Rob Perry doesn't care about a shot clock. <laughs> He'll just kind of lull you to sleep. Not really an explosiveness to his game, but he figures out a way to get his shot off. That's the third foul on DJ Burns. UMass in the one and one. Now Kenny White checks back in as Quincy Anderson goes to the bench for Steve Prone. Conte, six for six from the free throw line this season. But he misses the front end of that one and one. Wood. Can't do it all by himself. I certainly don't love that one. Cross left alone. He's a marksman. Oh, He's a, got 15. That's a big six-point swing there. Wood has been terrific. But when you take those ill-advised shots that your teammates aren't really expecting you to take, then all of a sudden your transition defense suffers. Next thing you know, Cross gets an open three. Let's take a look at that open three. Yeah, Cross does a good job and just a little miscommunication on who has who. For some reason, Perry was trying to run towards the ball after Burns had really picked up the ball. you got to find shooters at that point. Matt Cross has that wide base like Clay Thompson shooting threes. Yep. Spent two years in the ACC, first in Miami, then at Louisville. Missed a game early in the season for Matt Cross. He had an injured toe, didn't play against Central Connecticut, but had 13 against Towson and only two against Colorado. But now he's sparked the unit men with 15 points in this one. So Frank Martin has one timeout remaining with a bunch of time left, Dane. 5.38 to go. UMass in the bonus, Murray State. Not in the bonus yet, and with three timeouts remaining. I'm sure Coach Prome would love to get under this next media timeout, the under four, before he puts Kenny White Jr. back in the game, Jamari Smith, two starters, key players for him, both with four fouls. Let's see how long he holds off.
interesting the dichotomy of the two huddles you see a number of players talking in the murray state huddle in the umass huddle it's all eyes on me frank martin and i think the uglier this game can be the better for umass i mean if i'm frank martin i want this to be a free throw contest let's keep getting to the line extend the game the more free flowing it is the more run and gun the more it favors murray state if it does come down to free throws, you would have to give the advantage at this point to Murray State. They're shooting 71% as a team in their first three games of the season. UMass only 61% from the stripe in their first three games. Here we are with most of the starting lineup back, back in for the racers. As Coach Prome doesn't want to take any chance on trying to buy more time with those four fouls. Yeah, Just got to roll the dice and play them. Only one on the bench right now out of the starters is number two in white, Rob Perry. Brian Moore, who's played a really solid game as the backup, is on the floor now in crunch time. Here he is, kicks it out to Kenny White. Too strong on the three. Another rebound for Matt Cross. Cross has a double-double, 15 points, 11 boards. Looking to add to that. Walled up by Burns. Can't get it to go, and he falls down. And nothing called. Here's Jamari Smith with a left hand. Gets his own miss and puts it in. Feathery touch for a big guy. Physical play on both ends. I'm okay with the no call. On the other end, I thought White did a good job. Uh, Murray State and White did a good job walling up. And that's Kenny White. That's going to uh, be his fifth and final foul. So Kenny White is done for the day. I don't, I don't even think he realizes it. I mean, he's at the free throw. Does he even realize he had four? This is a guy got a technical earlier in the game. Maybe he hadn't been keeping the right count, but that's a big foul. And you can't you can't take a silly hack and reach like that when you're playing with four. So now Kenny White's done. Jamari Smith has four. Quincy Anderson has four. And DJ Burns with three. Rob Perry back on the floor. TJ Weeks hits the first. He's in double digits. Weeks one for two, the rebound to Burns. You can tell this Murray State team does not want to be conservative, even with the lead and time running out. And a traveling violation called on DJ Burns. Good call. Burns did a nice job trying to catch it in traffic, unable to get his feet set. Had Smith open for the three. Good defensive possession by UMass. You got your stop. Now you got to convert on the other end. And he's the content. Go. Easy two for the big man. Get that paint touch inside to a big man. Good things will happen. Just a four-point Murray State lead. Four minutes to go. Wood calling for the screen from Smith. Calls his own number, and he's short on the three. Fernandes tracks it down. And he got the switch he wanted. I would have preferred him trying to take Cross off the bounce, make him work a little bit more defensively, move his feet. Fernandes slips. See good? Go at him. Yeah. And there you go. Jay Burns called for the foul, even though he can't believe it. That's number four on DJ Burns. UMass starting to realize and remember where their bread is buttered, and it's down low in the paint. Conte with just a simple screen and roll, gets to the glass, gets to the paint, finishes off the glass. UMass right there.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by visitmyrtlebeach.com. Find where you belong at the beach. And by Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. And we're back at the beach, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the best beaches in the world are beaching all over the beach. This is Daryl One Trip Lavoy, a true beach strongman. Oh, blinded by the floaties. <laughs> oh, Daryl. <laughs> and that's how you beach with the best in Myrtle Beach. Until next time, beach easy. Are you saying beach easy or beach easy? Beach easy. Plan your best beach vacation at visitmyrtlebeach.com. He'll never make it back. Eat fresh refresh. Just won't stop. Now, Subway's refreshing their catering with easy order platters and lunch boxes perfect for any party. Pool parties, tailgates, holiday parties, even retirement parties. Man, I love parties. Subway keeps refreshing and refreshing. Four delicious pieces of chocolate. Three crisp wafers. Two layers of sweet Kit Kat filling. One incredible break. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Don't freak out, but you can get 50% off all menu price Domino's pizzas when you order online right now. Right now? Right now. Right now? Right now? Right now. 50% off, honey, right now! Now through the end of the week, get 50% off all mini price pizzas when you order online at Domino's. It has been a Myrtle Beach tournament of upsets in the first round. Colorado favored against UMass, UMass wins. A&M favored over Murray State, Murray State wins. Same thing in the bottom half of the bracket. Charlotte and Tulsa, both underdogs, both advanced to the semifinals. So the winner of this game, UMass Murray State, will face the winner of Charlotte and Tulsa. That game could be seen on ESPNU at 7 Eastern tonight. The championship game will be Sunday right here inside the HTC Center. It's kind of a microcosm of what college basketball has been in the first two weeks of the season. Yeah, none of us know anything, right? I mean, <laughs> the preseason rankings, throw them out the window, upsets everywhere. A lot of teams trying to figure things out with so many newcomers and transfers. Conte cans the first. Big free throw there. they got to keep converting. They're in the bonus. They're able to take advantage of the lack of size for Murray State and the foul trouble down low. Keep attacking on the paint. Wouldn't you know it, it's a one possession ball game. Felt like just a moment ago yeah. that it was a double digit lead. What was it? 61 51, and you guys just will not go away. Great touch for a big man yep. from the free throw line. Isaac Content, clutch free throws. Two point ball game, 326 to go. A trip to the finals on the line. Jacoby Wood off the ball. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a play call for him. Now Wood has it. Guarded by Fernandes. Moore calls his own number. Around and out. The rebound to Conte. A bucket and UMass could tie or take the lead and they tie it courtesy of Noah Fernandes. That's his shot. He just probes the defense. So cool, calm, collected with that mid-range fadeaway. Biggest shot of the night for UMass. And that foul is going to go on number 11 in maroon, Fernandes. Well, you're not going to get many open looks in this game. Fernandes just kind of does a little bit of a step back, makes the defense respect the roll opportunity, and he has been very selective, not forced the issue very much in this game. The veteran knows when it's time to step up and look for his own. Well, Murray State calls timeout of the 32nd variety. They have two timeouts remaining to UMass's one, and now Murray State is in the bonus. 
UMass has been in the bonus for a while, but it'll be free throws for Jacoby Wood at the end of this timeout. Let's go back to yesterday, Rich, when Murray State looked like they were pulling away from AM. And then AM goes on that big run. Steve Prome calls the timeout and says, hey, let's gather ourselves, don't panic. And then they went on a run of their own. So we've seen them handle adversity well so far in this tournament. Let's see what happens as the game gets tight here with a couple minutes to go. It'll be Jacoby Wood at the free throw line. And he has been nails. I'll check that. No free throws yet. They're in the bonus subsequently. So Wood with the ball, not at the free throw line. Jamari Smith contested too. Seven oh minute man run to get back in this game and tie it. And that one's gonna go off Burns and out of bounds in a state UMass basketball. Twelve on the shot clock. UMass's last lead in this game, 24-22, five and a half left in the first half. another dead ball foul we saw a couple of those in the first half from murray state i'm not sure if frank martin wasn't coaching the ref up on that one i mean perry was holding fernandes ref was all over it and you're right that's that's at least three dead ball fouls on the out of bounds plays by murray state and fernandes normally a little inconsistent at the free throw line hits one when it counts the most He's in double digits with 10. And we've talked about the importance of the pace. So many dead ball situations, free throws, not the transition opportunities. UMass feels good about their half-court defense. Keep it that way. First lead of the game for UMass since late in the first half. 65-63 minute man. Two minutes to go. Back door. Wood, teardrop! Woo, woo, woo. How sweet and pretty was that? Ice in his veins. I don't think the average fan realizes how difficult that is. Fernandes almost throws it away. He wants it back. Instead, TJ Weeks says, I gotcha! Fourth three of the game for TJ Weeks. Smith from the free throw line. Jamari Smith, butter. And it's a one point UMass lead. Fernandes checked by Perry. Cross. Under a minute to go. Ten on the shot clock. And he hesitates, cross, deep three, too strong, and it's tracked down by Rob Perry. Chance to regain the lead for Murray State. Eight-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And Brian Moore Jr. throws it away. And as Smith holds out his hand. Moore thought he was going to pop out. Smith showed his target hand, just not on the same page. He's expecting him to pop, and he's like, no, man, I was trying to post him up right here at the three-point line. Tough break. The 11th turnover for the Murray State Racers could be the costliest one of the game. Shot clock is off, 25 seconds to go. We got a foul now. And it's a kick ball by Jamari Smith. It'll stay Minuteman basketball, 19.7 to go. 
Thought they missed an opportunity there. Foul Diggins in the corner. I mean, this is a sophomore. It was 0 for 3. 0 for 2 from the free throw line this year. Not a lot of experience in these situations. Smith goes to the bench. Quincy Anderson takes his spot on the floor. Offense for defense. Now they get it to Weeks. And a foul committed right away by Rob Perry, his third. Two free throws coming for T.J. Weeks. Thirteen points for Weeks. All field goals coming via the three-point shot. He's been one of the unsung heroes. We, we seldom called his name yesterday. Just two points in that win against Colorado. But he has been all over the place from the three-point line. Around and out. And that opens up some more options for Steve Prohm on the offensive side of things. And Prohm calls one of his final two timeouts remaining. So a reset for you with 17.9 to go. Both teams, UMass and Murray State, one timeout remaining. Possession arrow in favor of the racers and both teams in the bonus shooting free throws on every subsequent foul the minutemen will be shooting two on every foul given up by the racers rich if i'm coach prome as you're drawing up a play on one hand you could put jacoby wood off the ball and let brian moore bring it up and try to run him off screens but I like the ball in Woods' hands. I mean, he, he's already shown he doesn't have to come off screens to score. He can create his own off the bounce. He's your best passer as well. And so he can create for others. Put him in some pick and roll action up top. Knowing that number 24 is your best option offensively. And as you would imagine, Jamari Smith has been reinserted into this game with one free throw coming for T.J. Weeks. So they have options. And I wouldn't be surprised if Smith gets an open look at the top of the key because they'd rather send help on that ball screen on Wood and give up the open three to Smith. Weeks missed them both. It goes out of bounds. Murray State basketball. So now a bucket wins it. For Murray State and sends them to the championship game. I know it's a small thing, but again, credit cross here, the deflection. Just that out of bounds allows you to set your defense and not being a transition opportunity. He's been terrific. 15 and 14. So here we go. Ten seconds on the clock. Wood cradles. They wave it off. And a foul on the floor. And that means Jacoby Wood will go to the free throw line. And UMass has elected to switch that ball screen the past couple times. Last time Wood settled for three. This time he says, no, Cross, I'm going to make you guard me off the bounce. Cross gets that hand in there on the hip. And they call the hand check right there as he goes into traffic. Jacoby Wood is 9 for 10 from the free throw line today. 19 for 20 on the season. And he ties it with that one. 23 for Jacoby Wood to match his point total from yesterday's upset win over Texas A&M. And there's his dad, Greg, and his mom, Tiffany. They've been standing pretty much the whole game inside the HTC Center. Yeah, that first one's a lot harder than the second one, especially in that situation. you got to have it, but, man... Wood has been so good and composed in this game. We saw the floater earlier on the baseline cut. A lot of key moments. So consistent. Really been the best player in this whole tournament. So seven seconds left. UMass has used their last timeout. So whatever happens after this free throw, they're going to have a play called. What do you think that play is going to be for Frank Martin? Well, of course, they're going to push it up the court with Fernandes. I don't think there's enough time really to feed the post down low like we've been talking about that They just don't have quick decision makers in the post I think you're gonna push up the court to Fernandes He can create his own on that mid-range jump shot or spread it out with shooters with guys like weeks up and cross 
Might have to be a deep contested one. But there's enough time to get a quality look. Jacoby Wood has been nails in this game, in this tournament, and all season from the free throw line. If he makes this, Murray State has a one-point lead. Bang. 24 for Wood. A 69-68 Murray State lead. And now UMass is going to have to go the full 94 to try and win this game. Cross with the inbounds. Gets it to Fernandez. He's double teamed. Three seconds. Fernandez for three in the win. He got it. Noah Fernandez wins it for UMass. Euphoria for the minute, men. Stunned disbelief for Murray State. Zero's on the clock, but the officials are checking to see if there needs to be time put back on. Let's take another look. Ball pressure all over me. Wondered if he was going to even get a clean look off at all. I couldn't get to his mid-range spot. He says, you know what, forget it. I'll just do this thing from three cash money in front of my bench. Come get me, brothers. Let's celebrate this thing. Man. After the clutch free throw says, I got one better for Nandy's. They're putting seven tenths of a second back on the clock. That's enough time for Murray State to squeeze one off. What a celebration. shot. <laughs> right in front of your own bench, Noah Fernandes, who has been harassed and hounded all game long. Only three field goals in this game for Fernandes before that three-pointer. And just amazing how patient he has been all game long, waiting for his opportunity, but everybody on that UMass team knew where they were going for the last shot. Gets it up to the court, just finds an opening. And really, if you're Murray State, you got him about where you want him. The, the only thing I would criticize Murray State on is you you want to turn them at least once right just that if you can make them turn and go from his right hand to left that buys a little or takes a little more time off the clock instead this really becomes somewhat of a straight line drive if you could have got one more turn into your help probably doesn't get as clean of a look off mm. college basketball heroics from Noah Fernandes, preseason second team all A-10. And he shows you why he's held in such high regard in that conference. Had 22 in their round one win against Colorado. But no bucket, maybe in his entire career, bigger than the one we just saw from Noah Fernandes. So now the question becomes, what does Murray State do with .7 left? Well, they're going to face a lot of ball pressure here. See if you can't get a deflection if you're UMass. But this is probably going to be a half-court weave. Uh, look at 24 and White kind of doing a little bit of a wheel route. It'll be at the bottom of your screen. Here's the wheel route. Justin Morgan to inbounds from half-court. And Noah Fernandes plays the hero. And